Hello, my name is Chris, and as you have seen by the title today, we're talking about a fragrance from the house of Saint Laurent. So as you have seen, maybe, maybe you have not, I did a short unboxing this fragrance and uh, I don't know, my shorts just don't do well on YouTube at all. Maybe I just need to get out there and shake my tatas or do something different. But anywho, today we're talking about a fragrance from the house of Saint Laurent and the one we have here today is Rouge Velours. So this fragrance, uh, there was another iteration of it where the bottle looked different, the liquid looked different, and then they repackaged it. I'm assuming they also reformulated from what I was reading online and changed the smell up a little bit. This is what the box looks like for the fragrance we have here. It is part of the Le Vestiaire collection. So this is going to be Yves Saint Laurent's more luxury, more premium fragrances. They're not terrible on price. They're not cheap either, but 270 for 4.2 ounces is a pretty good deal. However, just so you do know, you can get a two ounce bottle for 185 US dollars. So this is what the box looks like. I am a little upset because I ordered this fragrance from Bloomingdale's. Yves Saint Laurent has a really weird website. And just so everyone knows, I do tend to order my fragrances in pay and for installments because a home girl cannot afford to buy them all at once. But Long story short, I break them up into payments and Saint Laurent does work through Afterpay, but for some reason it does not work on their site. I don't know. They need to fix that. But I did get this guy here and it is a bigger bottle of the 4.2 ounce bottle. And it came a little beat up. You can see there the corner, it's like messed up. You know, the actual little stand that it comes in is all jacked up. I mean, they like sent this through the ringer and back. I don't know if I should call them and be like, send me another one. But I mean, at the same time, I've already sprayed it and worn it and reviewed it at this. So when you open this box, you can see that it's all messed up here. And voila, you get a bottle that is falling on its side. No, I'm kidding. It, it did come like this, actually, but it does not come like that. I mean, if you have not seen my video for Tuxedo, Tuxedo did not come like that. I also ordered that through Bloomingdale's and... Their shipping was faster and I don't know, maybe it was just a store that it was shipped from. I don't know. But this is what the bottle looks like. It's absolutely gorgeous, you guys. I love the color red in here. It does very much symbolize the name, which is Rouge Velours, which is more of a lipsticky patent red lip. You know, that's what Yves Saint Laurent is talking about here. And this is as audacious as lacquered red lipstick, as Tom Ford would say. But yes, this is the front here. You know, you don't get anything on the side. You do get some information here at the bottom with a tiny, tiny sticker. And then you do get the Yves Saint Laurent logo at the top there. And it's also on the inside there. Can you see that? Oh, look, look at that. Your cap is magnetic. You can technically hold it from here. This is a pretty pricey bottle and it is quite heavy. So I would not suggest picking it up from here. You might break it and God knows you would have a heart attack. I would at least. So about the fragrance, I actually did a poll on the Yves Saint Laurent fragrances, at least with their top selling Le Vestiaire collection fragrances. And everyone picked out Tuxedo. Second most picked out and the one that people were actually commenting that it would be interesting to see a video on was Rouge Velours, which is this guy here. And when I read the notes online, I said, this is going to be like Jasmine Rouge. Jasmine Rouge is a fragrance by Tom Ford. And it is a Jasmine fragrance with lots of white peppercorn. And it is not my cup of tea. This does contain Jasmine in it, but it's done so differently. This is more based on patchouli. It's based on rose in here, but it's a very weird combination of both of them. That's like right smack in the middle. It's a fantastic fragrance. I was actually very shocked because when I thought about getting this fragrance, I was like, this is going to be one of those fragrances that I'm going to buy. I'm going to review because people want to see more of a Le Vestiaire, but it's going to be a fragrance that's going to sit on the shelf because I'm not going to wear it because it's going to be overly feminine. Now, to my surprise, I sprayed this on and I was like, oh, I can see the rose, you know, it's, it's a little rose. It's, 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 it's Yves Saint Laurent fragrance, true and true, because Yves Saint Laurent has that rock and roll vibe, you know, that ultra sexy power suit woman type of vibe. Very clean line minimals, but very bold at the same time. And this fragrance does have that DNA in the fragrance itself, which is, it's very hard that you can get all that just from a perfume and a smell. 
but you can. And this fragrance, I was very, very shocked to see, oh, it has masculine tones in here, but none of the notes when you read them actually scream out masculinity. So at the top, we're going to get white tea as well as pink pepper. White tea is probably one of the bigger, you know, contributors into this fragrance because it does kind of run through the entire thing. Although it's a top note, it doesn't seem to dissipate. It does run through all the way to the base. And because of that, it gives it a very nice baseline where the fragrance can work from and build upon. White tea as a note is incredibly expensive. It's very hard to manufacture and it is a little bit rare in today's perfumery but it is in this fragrance and it's done very well. I was actually very shocked to see white tea in here. That's one of the things that I was like, it's going to get lost because we're putting pink pepper next to it. We're grabbing patchouli in here. We're grabbing vetiver. All of the notes in here are kind of like stars in their own right. And because I was like, white tea is not going to be the one that's going to be, you know, a standout note. I was very shocked to be able to smell the white tea come through. In the middle notes, we're going to get rose, iris, and jasmine. The iris in here is going to give it that powdery touch. It's a true powdery iris, something that you would see in Prada's Lome, and you are Om O. Uh, but this one itself is going to be kind of a very unique middle ground. It's not going to be overly masculine like those fragrances, but it's not going to be a womanly iris like infusions to iris from Prada but it is going to give it that powdery element that makes this fragrance have that very Yves Saint Laurent signature smell to it without being a Prada fragrance or without being one of the fragrances that I just mentioned. I would certainly say that this is one of the ones that does it very well. The rose is very prevalent in here, but the rose really plays around and flirts with the patchouli that you'll see here in the base in a second. The jasmine does come through here. You know, I do also believe that there is maybe some tuberose in this fragrance because it does come through just ever so slightly because this fragrance does have a lot of drama. So if you are looking for a perfect date night fragrance or an attention seeking fragrance where you're going to walk into a room and people are going to be like, oh, she's, she's, she or he is like banging. And then I would certainly say that this is probably the one that you want because it does have Quite a bit of drama but it's done tastefully it's not going to be something that's going to choke out the room it's not going to be something that's going to be like oh you know you smell like an old lady or you smell like too harsh or too soft or too delicate it's going to be one of those that's right in the middle of all those it's going to be that middle ground that is likable by everyone but is also going to tell them who you are exactly then in the base we have patchouli musk and vetiver the vetiver is also here and has another contrast note you know to really just amplify everything else and not really be a star of the show on its own but you do get that to very in this fragrance through the patchouli in here is a very nice patchouli it's a very earthy wet rooty type patchouli and i would certainly say that this one in here is similar to things that you would probably find like in patchouli absolute by tom ford which is a patchouli that was done very well it's typically not done very well it's either ultra feminine you know, very old school, or it can be done as incredibly raw and kind of animalic. And with this one itself, they really went for that earthy, wet patchouli, you know, that fresh rain type of smell that you can kind of get from patchouli, if you get what I'm saying. And the musk in this one is going to be really, really soft. It's not going to be a musky fragrance, so don't think that at all. But it works really well in contrast with the rest of the notes in this fragrance. What do I say about this one? I I really do like it. I had to go to the office four times this week, which is very rare for me. But because of that, you know, I did wear this one of the days that I went in there and got loads of compliments with it because, it, again, it's one of those fragrances that really is a powerful, it's a power suit. So if you are a woman and you're wanting to get attention, it's a power suit. If you are a guy, it's a rock and roll vibe. And it's very much tastefully done. Like I said, it's not going to be Something that screams, look at me, look at me. It's going to be one of those fragrances that definitely captivates attention. And I was really, really shocked and surprised to see that people that don't like rose actually like this fragrance. And I would certainly say that this is one of the ones that people are sleeping on. I do like Tuxedo. You know, I ordered it because everyone wanted to see a review on that one. Um, I'm sure there's countless of reviews out there on Tuxedo. But I would certainly actually say that this is probably better than Tuxedo because... 
Tuxedo has the same DNA, the same blueprint, a baseline that this one does have in it. The thing about Tuxedo is that it is a little, you know, it's been done, it's been replicated. It's one of those fragrances that's beautiful. I do like it. I would not return my bottle, but it is one of those fragrances that if they were to point me and say, you have to pick either Rouge Lore or Tuxedo, I would go for this one blindly because it is much better of a fragrance. It's unique. It's powerful. It's confident. It's sexy. And if you are going on a date and you are trying to portray any of those, I would certainly say to get Rouge Lore. Well, that is today's video. What are your guys' thoughts on this fragrance? Have you tried it? If you have, let me know what you think about it. I really like to see what other people's opinions of the fragrances are because they obviously change from person to person. I would certainly say that this is a fragrance that I do recommend hands down because it is one of my favorites. It's one of the ones that's made me more excited about fragrance in a while. With trying so many fragrances so frequently for the channel, I kind of get spoiled in the sense that I get to smell quite a bit of different perfumes. And some of them become repetitive, some of them smell like each other, and all of them, you know, kind of start to blend in after a while. And this fragrance is one of the ones that really has made me excited about fragrances again. It makes me want to go and explore more of the La Vestiaire collection and line because obviously Tuxedo was a good one, but this one is a fantastic fragrance, and I'm sure there are other hidden gems within the line as well. But yes, so let me know down in the comments down below what your guys' thoughts are and make sure to give the video a thumbs up as it does help the channel. We are growing ever, ever so slightly, very little at a time, but I'm very happy to see everyone commenting, everyone finding out about the channel and also commenting what they want to see and what they don't want to see. Also, make sure to subscribe for more fragrance-related content, you guys, and I hope to see you on the next video. Bye.